Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Central High School, uh, alma mater to so many of you, not me. <laughs> they let me in anyway, as a proud graduate of Manchester High School West. Uh, for those of you who don't know you, my name is John Clayton. I'm the executive director of the Manchester Historic Association, and it's my great honor to welcome you here today for the New Hampshire swearing-in ceremony for Congressman Chris Pappas. Again, we welcome you here to Chris's alma mater. Uh, as a Manchester boy, he felt it was important that they apparently had these ceremonies in Washington on Thursday. Well, that was simply not sufficient for Chris to be inducted as a member of Congress. Uh, it had to happen here in his hometown, and I'm honored to be here with you. Uh, we have a great program. It is going to be short and sweet because there were so many of you here. Uh, we have standing room only and then some. So uh, please join me in welcoming the New Hampshire Gay Men's Chorus and Girl, Sc Girl Scout Troop 12 20, pardon me, 12046, they're getting bigger, uh, led by Rep. Cassie, Cassie Levesque, and we're going to hear from the choir in a minute, but in this point, we'd like to welcome the Manchester Police Department and Manchester Fire Department Honor Guard for the posting of the colors on the stage. Please stand. We'll now have the national anthem performed by the New Hampshire Gay Men's Chorus. remain standing for the colors and Please remain standing as our entertainers exit the stage. The New Hampshire Gay Men's Chorus and Girl Scout Troop 12046, led by Representative Cassie Levesque.
Please be seated. At this time, we'd like to recognize some visiting dignitaries who have joined us here today, uh, including former Executive Counselor of Dudley Dudley. Raise your hand so the crowd can find you. Thank you, Executive Counselor. Current Executive Counselor Andrew Valinsky to the right of me. New Hampshire State Democratic Party Chairman Raymond Buckley. Uh, we have a number of senators who've joined us here today, including Senate President Donna Susie. I believe Senator David Waters is with us. If you are, Senator, please make yourself known. If not, you're, ex you're excused. Uh, Senator Lou D'Alessandro. <laughs> Senator John Morgan. <laughs> My own Senator Kevin Kavanaugh. <laughs> Former Mayor Robert Baines. And if we've omitted anybody who qualifies as a dignitary, Chris is going to make the apologies for me later on. So <laughs> thank you for joining us. Uh, at this point, it is my pleasure to invite to the stage uh, Mayor Joyce Craig and Congressman Chris Pappas. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Chris Pappas, do solemnly swear. I, Chris Pappas, do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely that I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservations or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservations or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faith faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. The duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Congressman. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please be seated. You know, we've had some great assemblies in this building, in this school, uh, but none as important to me as this one here. You know, two days ago in Washington, D.C., the 116th Congress convened. We gather to begin our new session and the important work that confronts our nation. But serving as your member of Congress wouldn't be official for me until I took that oath before all of you here today. And I'm so glad that so many of you have gathered at this moment. I want to thank our great mayor, Joyce Craig, for all her work for the city of Manchester. To my friend John Clayton, who's the keeper of the historical flame here in the city of Manchester and does great work. A great performance by the New Hampshire Gay Men's Chorus, and we're thrilled that they've joined us here today. I want to thank Representative Cassie Levesque and the Girl Scout Troop from Lee. Thank you for joining us here today. You made it real special for us. To the Manchester Police and Fire Department's Honor Guard, thank you for presenting the colors and for being a part of this ceremony. To my friends in the House and Senate and on the Executive Council, to my friend Molly Kelly, who joins us here today, thank you very much. To my alma mater, Central, and the Central High School community that turned out here today, it's a thrill to be with you. To the, new, to the New Hampshire Food Bank, their Recipe for Success program that's preparing some food right now that we're all, all going to take um, part uh, of a little bit later after this program is done. And I want to thank my family who's joined us here as well. My parents, Don and Arthur Pappas, and my extended family for all their support. 
They've stood me, with me in the kitchen at the Puritan Backroom Restaurant. They've stood with me throughout this campaign. I wouldn't be standing on this stage without them. Thank you for your love and support. And thank all of you. This is a wonderful shared experience coming into Congress at this point in our nation's history. And welcome to Manchester High School Central, the oldest and most diverse public high school in the state. Three generations of my family graduated from this institution, and this place fundamentally shaped who I am and my worldview. From Mrs. Mirabili's history class, to Mr. Mayotte's French class, to Ms. Nakash Haas's history, uh, literature course, excuse me. World Lit is everywhere, by the way, if you, if you didn't know. It's right in the back of the room. And to Mr. O'Neill's civics course, I received a world-class education in the Manchester school system, and thank you all for making it so. So, in taking the oath of office here, I feel like I'm coming full circle because I'm going from a kid that was wandering the halls of Central High School to a representative who's working for you in the halls of Congress, and I couldn't be more honored to take that title and to fight for you each and every day. You know, I grew up in a restaurant business that's just up the road. You've probably been there. I learned a lot about the world around me. I certainly learned about hard work, and I want to thank my extended Puritan family, who's well represented here today. You guys always bring a lot of spirit wherever you go. But I learned about the importance of service through that restaurant experience. I learned about putting others before yourself, about working together, about treating everyone with dignity and respect. And we need a little bit more of that in Washington, don't we, folks? So it is about time we take some New Hampshire know-how, some common sense, and some hard work down to Washington, D.C. to try to make a difference for the people of the Granite State. As I said on election night, whether you're a Republican, an independent, or a Democrat, wherever you live, whatever your income, race, or religion, and whomever you love, I will get up and fight for you each and every day. That's a promise that I make to you here again today. So, so there's so much to tackle in the coming weeks and years. We are entering office at a point where our government is shut down and we need to treat the federal workers with the dignity and the respect that they deserve and reopen the doors of your government. And it certainly doesn't stop there because we need to end the culture of corruption, the outsized influence that special interests and big money have in Washington, D.C., and protect voting rights across this country. We need to make sure we need to make sure that health care is accessible and affordable to each and every American. It should be a right and not a privilege. And we must create an economy that works for everyone. We need to ensure that we lower student debt loads, that we make sure that we have strong public schools across this country, and that we ensure that there are good paying jobs available to young people right here in the Granite State. We must continue to confront the opioid epidemic and expand services for New Hampshire veterans. And we need to invest in our roads and bridges and rail systems and make sure that we have a strong infrastructure system across this country. We've got to attack climate change head on and make sure that we take bold steps to stave off the worst effects from climate change and invest in renewable energy sources. You know, this is one of the most discouraging and divided times in our nation's history, but we can't give up. We can never give up on our democracy or relinquish our ability to have the power to make change and to try to get it right. You know, when things get tough, Granite Staters persevere. And that's what we've seen the last couple years. Because while our politics may seem petty and small, Americans' hearts and ideas are big. And while the government today may be shut down, I'm here to tell you that the first district in New Hampshire is open for business. So, so I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today and for being a part of this event. I look forward to serving you each and every day over the next couple of years. I look forward to hearing from you on an ongoing basis, and I know that you'll do that, that you'll offer your unvarnished opinions and your thoughts and your concerns. Please visit us in Dover at our district office. We're going to be opening one up here in Manchester on Elm Street. 
We're up and running in Canon 323. If you're ever in our nation's capital, please reach out to us. Let us know how we can help you, how we can help your neighbors, and how we can better chart a course for the future. So let's all stay involved and engage these next couple years, and let's work together to get the job done. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Chris. Uh, the New Hampshire Gay Men's Choir will perform another song for us this evening, pardon me, this afternoon. Thinking, thinking happy already. Um, okay. uh, the song will be The Beauty of the Earth.
again to the New Hampshire Gay, gay Men's Course. And at this point, I'm going to provide a brief history of the first congressional district, which was organized as an at-large district in 1847. In that year, Amos Tuck was the first elected to the seat. As you may know, uh, Tuck was a Dartmouth College graduate whose name is still associated with Dartmouth at the Amos Tuck School of Business. Tuck is also widely recognized as one of the founders of the Republican Party, but in this time of bipartisanship, we forgive him. <laughs> in 1853, George Washington Kittredge was the first Democrat elected to the first CD. Uh, like Chris Pappas, he attended Harvard University and began his political career, as did Chris, with the New Hampshire House of Representatives. In 1855, James Pike was elected to the first congressional district as a member of the Know Nothing Party. Now, it may be my Irish ancestry th showing through, but I do believe that Know Nothing Party was the single most accurate name ever associated with a political party in American political history. <laughs> and if you don't know what I'm speaking about, ask my friend Sheila Smith, <laughs> Kathy Sullivan, Kevin Cavanaugh, Molly Kelly, Bob Mongan, uh, Patricia Cornell, and Judy Reardon. I think we can all help tell the story about the Know Nothing Party. Uh, in 1875, a Democrat from Portsmouth was elected to the first CD. Uh, you may know his name. His name was Frank Jones. Uh, it was Frank Jones who was active in the railroad industry and the hotel industry. Frank Jones is one who presided over the rebirth of the Wentworth by the Sea Hotel. But to me, his greatest contribution to our nation was as the founder and owner of the Frank Jones Brewery in Portsmouth, one of the largest producers of ale in the United States. Uh, for the record, Chris, you know I love you, but you're going to have to do a lot of awful good things to supplant Frank Jones as <laughs> my favorite congressman in the first congressional district. Uh, it wasn't until 1913 that the first Manchester native was elected to the first CD, and that was former Manchester Mayor Eugene Reed. I don't know if you know, but at the time, Mayor Reed was recognized as one of the great marksmen in America, having taken part in shooting contests with the likes of Buffalo Bill Cody and Annie Oakley. It may be a coincidence, Mayor Craig, but I'm told that while serving as mayor, Eugene Reed regularly presided over the shortest aldermanic meetings in city history. <laughs> coincidence? You decide. <laughs> the longest serving representative from the first CD, that was Chester Merrill, who was elected to 10 consecutive terms from 1943 to 1963. And the first woman to be elected to the first congressional district, wait for it, uh, was Democrat Carol Shea Porter. <laughs> Carol was first elected in 2006, then 2008, then 2012, and then 2016. And it was her selfless decision to step down that opened the door for Chris Pappas, who only had to overcome 10 challengers in the <laughs> Democratic primary to claim the nomination and then the general election. Piece of cake, right, Chris? Uh, yes, the first CD has a long and fascinating history, and this past Thursday, the mantle was officially passed to our own Chris Pappas. Certainly, that ceremony on our nation's capital, as he indicated, may have been a dream come true, but this, today, this is not a dream. This is reality. Being a true son of Manchester is not only right and fitting that we recognize him with this ceremony here today, here in Manchester, and here at his alma mater, Central High School. And I am honored to be here with him today, as I hope you are as well. Thank you. Chris mentioned the fabulous food that has been prepared by our friends at the New Hampshire Food Bank. Uh, and although folks at the back room might fight for their own uh, quality of cuisine, uh, <laughs> this is a great program that serves uh, not people just here in Manchester, but around the state of New Hampshire. And we hope you will stay with us, have a chance to chat with Chris, pose for photographs, uh, and help us celebrate this great win for all of us here in Manchester and in New Hampshire. Thank you. One more reminder about the food. It is to my left, your right, and feel free to start, and Chris will be working the room for the rest of the afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> 